Hi everybody, my name is Aaron Alsop and I would like to tell you the story about how my best friend's girlfriend almost destroyed $5,000 worth of my camera equipment and how I was able to save it. So here's the story. A friend of mine was doing a music shoot and he asked me if he could borrow some of my equipment. I said, you know what, that's fine as long as you take care of it and I know you will, that's totally fine. Problem was, is the shoot was three hours away. He was going to spend the weekend there. He already lived 30 minutes south of me. And when he got done with work, he was hoping to just pick up and leave right away. But if he was to drive up, get the equipment and drive back, it would add an extra hour onto his journey. So what he did was he asked if his girlfriend could pick up the equipment because she lives in the same city I, as I do. And she was going to drive down and meet him at his place. And they were going to drive over to the shoot for a romantic weekend together making this music video. So anyways, his girlfriend stops by. I put all of the equipment I was letting him borrow in the back of her car. And I say, well, you have a great weekend. And I say goodbye. My friend gives me a call and he says, hey, thanks for you know letting me use your equipment. We're on the road. I'm like, awesome. Well, that night rolls around and he gives me a call and says, Hey, Aaron, uh, where's your camera at? That's probably the worst thing you could ever hear. Where's your camera at? Because not only did the case of my camera in it, it had three of my lenses in it that I had paid quite a bit for and I'd invested heavily in. And we found out that what happened was we put all the equipment in his girlfriend's car. And then when his girlfriend went to his house, she got things ready by putting all of the equipment from my car into his car, but she forgot my case with my camera and my lenses in it. Now, normally this wouldn't be that big of a deal because it was at his apartment complex. It was at a, you know, out in, you know, the back of her car for a weekend isn't that big of a deal. The problem was it was in the middle of January and I live in Idaho. And the thing that made it even worse, and I'm not even making this up, this sounds like something you would hear in a movie. It just so happened that weekend that they were gone was the coldest weekend we have had in my town in the past 20, maybe even 30 years. It got down to 40 below zero. Now, for those of you who have never experienced 40 below zero, it is extremely cold. You're right now probably sitting in a room that's 68, 70 degrees. 40 below is 110 degrees colder than what you're in right now. That's how cold it is. I checked the Canon website and I saw that you really shouldn't have your camera in weather colder than that, especially the one I had. And I started freaking out because there was nothing I could do. The girlfriend took her keys with her, so it's not like I could even get into the car unless I wanted to just shatter a window and you know, pop the trunk and get it that way, which I did consider doing, but didn't. So anyways, the weekend comes to an end. He comes over, brings back all my equipment, including my camera and the lenses and the case of it is in. And this was the scariest moment in my filmmaking career because I just thought, here's $5,000 worth of my equipment that I've invested in that could be gone, could not work. The electronics could have been broken because of the cold. The condensation that just naturally is in there could have frozen and shattered some of the glass elements. I was, I was nervous. Anyways, the moment of truth, I flip on the on switch. The camera turns on. I look at all the lenses. Nothing's wrong. And I still have that camera and all those lenses today. So what's the moral of this story? First off, don't entrust your equipment to your best friend's girlfriend if she doesn't understand cameras and won't take care of them. I learned that one. Second most important piece of information, moral of the story, if you don't have a Pelican case, you need to buy one. It hasn't just saved me from these times, believe me. There's been so many other times when it's just casually dropped or, or people uh, put something through something and it landed on my camera case. But because it was a Pelican case, things were just, nothing happened. Things just worked out. If you really think about it, you're investing so much money into your camera equipment, whether it's, you know, a $20,000 Red Epic. Well, actually, they cost more than that. But you get the point. A $20,000 camera and lenses. 
or even if it's just a T2I with a kit lens, you're still putting money into that that you're investing for both you and your filmmaking and you and your career. So you really need to take care of it. Pelican cases, they run between $50 and $100, and you really owe it to yourself to be able to get something to protect the investment of your filmmaking equipment, whatever it is, both lenses, lights, cameras, audio equipment, you need to protect it. I learned my story, fortunately, the easy way by getting it. I can't imagine what I would have been doing if I had learned the hard way and didn't have the Pelican case and my camera was, was not, did, it didn't come out the way I wanted to. So anyways, that's the story for today. I would like to hear if any of you have had any past experiences with Pelican cases or any other heavy duty case saving your life. If you're interested in what type of Pelican cases I recommend, I'm going to put some links to Amazon uh, Pelican cases that I use and have worked with that I think are great for filmmaking. Anyways, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be doing more of these stories so you can learn from both my mistakes and successes. I'd like to count this one as a success. Until next time, keep filming.